Hi, I'm Alex from Wilkinson Cameras and today we're at WWT Martin May. We're testing the Sigma 60-600mm DGDN in a Sony FE mount. I've got a monopod because as you can see it's quite a big lens. I'm using it on the A7 IV and we're going to show you just how versatile this 60-60 or 10 times zoom lens can be. So WWT Martin May is the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust. So you might hear that there are lots of birds in the background. We've come here deliberately because we want to test this in an environment where we know we're gonna get some wildlife. So this is the biggest zoom range available for Sony um, or maybe even any system. I'm gonna stop because, <laughs> let's try that again. This is the biggest zoom range available to um, any system, I think, but certainly for Sony. It's an extremely versatile lens for sports and wildlife photographers thanks to the massive 60 to 600 mil focal length. Wildlife, motorsports, air shows, this lens really does open up your opportunities to capture really great quality images at a huge range of focal lengths. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I'm going to give these birds a minute to do whatever it is that they're doing. <laughs> so yeah, you've got really a really wide range of focal lengths here, 60 to 600. It's opening up loads of opportunities for you. If you wanted to stick it on an APS-C camera, maybe like the A6600, you'd have the equivalent focal length of 90 to 900 mil. To be honest, it's not something that I think I would do. It's a very, very big lens, as you can see. Um, it doesn't really lend itself to the smaller Sony cameras. However, you could maybe maximise the crop mode on the full frame cameras. On a Sony a7R5, for example, this would result in a 26 megapixel image. And on the a7 IV that we're using today, you're still getting 16 megapixels when you crop. This 10 times zoom lens effectively means you can go out for a day or to capture an event and you only have to take the one lens. You're removing the time and hassle of changing the lenses or carrying a second lens, uh, a second body with a wider lens on it. It's at least two lenses in one uh, and it does feel like it because this lens is heavy. Uh, more on that later. This is a redesign of the original DSLR 60-600mm but built from the ground up for full frame mirrorless cameras. It's exciting for a couple of reasons. One, it's the most wide-ranging zoom lens available to Sony, as we've already said. And two, it means that there might be potential to see this lens available for Nikon Z and Canon RF mounts in the future. Or at least we can hope. We're not seeing that just at the moment. So I tested this lens at the weekend and the image quality I got from it at all focal lengths was really, really good. Subjects were sharp throughout the zoom range. In this review, I will not be delving into how many elements make up this lens, although there's 27 in 19 groups, or what they're coated with. I don't think you'll ever see us shooting test charts in our reviews. Sorry lens nerds, but I think it's more important to review camera equipment in a way that you're most likely going to use it. So this weekend I tested it in and around my house for an initial opinion, and today we're here at Martin Mir to put it through a more realistic world, uh, real world test. My initial opinion, after using it briefly, is that this is a really, really good quality lens and I like the images that it produced and it really is very, very versatile. However, there's always a however, this lens is mega heavy. It weighs in at just shy of 2.5 kilos and I found it a bit of a chore to carry around with me handheld and use for prolonged periods. I have a really sore back at the moment, so the timing of this is uh, pretty awful on top of that but there are some solutions. So for our proper test today, I'm using the ProMaster Air Support Monopod, which I'll show you a bit more detail later. And I'm hoping that this is the ticket to getting the most from this lens. So far, it's been absolutely brilliant. That's what it's resting on just now. I've also brought a strong, but very compact and lightweight carbon tripod with me. Uh, and we're gonna be using that with a ProMaster Pro gimbal head on it as well. So hopefully, that will mean that the weight isn't really an issue. I don't know what that is.
This is the Sigma DG DN Sports lens. The DG means it's full frame, the DN means it's designed for mirrorless cameras rather than DSLRs. We have a separate video covering the difference between those, so check that out if you've no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, OS means it's optically stabilised, with Sigma stating this offers up to seven stop stabilisation, uh, six stops at the 600mm end. This is really essential, as I've said it is a long and heavy lens, so you do need that OS to help you get, uh, to help you when you're hand holding. It also features a new HLA, or high speed linear motor. Linear motors basically offer incredibly fast and accurate autofocus, along with being very quiet. They're great for stills and video autofocus and handle continuous AF brilliantly. You'll notice lots of new mirrorless lenses feature this kind of motor. The sports line from Sigma offer their highest level of build quality and feature longer lenses. They're designed for, well, sports, <laughs> but also wildlife photographers, whether enthusiast or professional. They feature high levels of weather sealing and dust resistance and are built to last and withstand extreme environments. This lens is dust and weather sealed, which is great for us, uh, because if you're a regular to our channel, then you'll notice we tend to pick the days that it's raining to come out and film. Um, so far today we've been quite lucky. It's got a full internal build. Um, internal build? It's got a full internal metal build. Uh, we've got a stripped down 150 to 600 mm sports lens, which will show you exactly what this means. But in essence, it means that it's built to last and to perform. The outside of the lens is made from thermally stable composite, or TSC, which in layman's terms means the outer shell is designed to be uh, neutral to changes in temperature, such as extreme heat or cold, which could cause the elements inside the lens to shrink or expand and produce ex distorted images. Uh, this is why some brands do white or grey lenses, it's to reduce the heat uh, as the light shines on them, but Sigma do this with their TSC outer instead. The lens comes in its own dedicated case, which makes transport and storage a little bit easier. The bag itself has a shoulder strap, but the lens includes a strap as well. Uh, the strap lugs on this side, uh, we all notice we've been using a Peak Design strap on there. The lens hood has a padded cover, which is a nice touch, and I quite like popping it on when we're just between locations, it just protects the, the end of the lens. Uh, the lens hood attaches with a screw, which I think on a lens this size is so much easier than a bayonet, so very easy, just sometimes you can lose them, so be careful. Uh, one of my favorite things about this lens is that it's been designed to be a push-pull, or I've actually got it locked, a push-pull lens where you can just push and pull like that, or you can twist in the normal way. I've actually found the push pull to be invaluable because it's such a massive zoom range and it is a very wide lens. It's just not as practical for me to rotate the zoom ring when I can just push or pull and frame my subjects very easily. There's a lock button on the zoom, which if I press that, prevents me from extending it. It prevents lens creep when you're moving around or if you've got the lens tilted. You might encounter lens creep in certain positions or after time, I haven't found any personally. Locking the lens when carrying it around is, is pretty essential just because of the sheer size of it. There is also an MF, AF switch and a manual focus ring. The minimum focus distance on this lens is 45 centimetres to 260 centimetres at the wide and telephoto ends of the lens. This is 15 centimetres closer than the original DSLR version of this lens. The focus limiter allows you to select either the closest minimum focus distance to 6 metres six meters to infinity or the full range. Selecting one of the specific focus ranges will allow faster autofocus, so if you know your subject will be in a specific range, choose accordingly for the best performance. So for birds in flight, I'll be choosing the six meters to infinity setting to gain the optimum AF settings. There's two stabilization modes. You can either turn stabilization off, which is usually advisable when using on a tripod. You'll definitely want it on for handheld. Mode 1 offers compensation for both vertical and horizontal movement. This will be your go-to mode for most scenarios. Mode 2 is for panning shots. If you're a motorsports photographer, you'll probably use this one more. There's a custom mode for IS, which you can fine tune if you have the Sigma USB dock. I'm smiling because I don't know if you can hear this massive <laughs> uh, flock of birds up above me. <laughs> So I don't think I would personally use the custom IS modes, uh, but 
it's an option if you if you need it if you want to fine tune. The tripod collar features an Arca Swiss style or dovetail tripod mount as standard. All the latest Sigma sports lenses have this. This is great because we're going to be using it on the ProMaster gimbal head later, and uh, we can just pop it straight on there. As you can see, you can also just pop it onto a monopod. There's no teleconverter available for this lens, so it's simply not an option for Sigma's E-mount lenses. I think this is determined by Sony rather than Sigma. But as I said earlier, you could use the crop modes in the higher resolution cameras if you want the extra reach or just crop in post. Oh, that one went slowly, I would like to point out. <laughs> Did you? This is Liv, sick of me trying to take decent bird charts, having a go. And one of these birds just basically floated past her at a leisurely pace. The stabilisation on the lens is really, really good. This means I can ha hand hold on a much lower shutter speed for shooting in low light, woodlands, etc., and still get my subject sharp. This is a really big lens. I've said it a few times now. It's long. Uh, it gets even longer at 600 mil, and it's pretty heavy too. Uh, it does weigh about two and a half kilos. The push-pull zoom works very well, and that means that despite the lens extending when zoomed, you still have full control because you're moving the balance with you. So this is a little bit more tricky when shooting on a gimbal head because of course the balance changes. Push-pull zooms could potentially pull in dust over time, although Sigma do state it's dustproof, so I'm not overly convinced, uh, I'm not overly concerned uh, with that. The images are sharp at all focal lengths and I found that the autofocus is fast and keeps up with moving subjects with ease. My initial test shots, I haven't shown any issues with sharpness, distortion or chromatic aberration. The lens performed exceptionally well. It was better than I was expecting if I'm being completely honest. There's a little bit of vignetting but nothing overly concerning and something that can very quickly be removed in editing. There's no major chromatic aberration or any noticeable uh, chromatic aberration in most shooting conditions. Twigs in distant, tree, distant trees against a bright sky. Uh, certain apertures do show some, but you're really going to have to look for it, and most lenses would in this scenario. The lens produces a lovely creamy bokeh, nicely separating the subject from the background. I'm really, really pleased with the results this lens produces based on the images I've taken with it so far, and I reckon it is well worth the size, weight, and price. If you're looking to buy a super telephoto lens like this, there are some other lenses you might be considering alongside it. The Sigma 150-600mm lens, the uh, Sony 200-600mm are probably both on your list and at just short of £2,000, this lens is a considered purchase. The 60-600mm is clearly the winner in terms of versatility. The ability to get this massive wide shot and then also zoom into 600mm it's pretty astounding from one lens and at the quality of the images that you're getting. The fact that the image quality is superb throughout the focal range compounds that this is a great lens for you to consider. Yes, it's hefty, both in size and price, but it's one lens where you'd normally need at least two. If you don't need that very wide end, whether this is due to the type of photography you do or because you've already got a favourite lens that covers that, then you should probably look at the Sigma 150 to 600 mm Sports, uh, DGDN, the Sony version. This has the same exceptional build quality and is known for its image quality. It's gonna save you about 500 grams in weight and 800 pounds in your pocket. So it is a big difference. The Sony 200 to 600 F5.6 to 6.3G OSS is another contender it's also about five centimetres longer than this lens, so you are going to need to consider whether you can fit that in your bag. But it's also about 400 grams lighter and 400 pounds less expensive. But it is a dedicated telephoto lens starting at 200 mil. You're missing a whole other lens. You effectively would need a 70 to 200 on top of that lens. I've used the Sony 200 to 600 lens. And personally, I, I, I did like it. It's massive, massive. And I did find myself swapping between this and the 70-200 throughout the day. But the 70-200 I was swapping to was an f2.8, which did mean I could make the most of that fast aperture to separate the subject from my background, which of course I can't do on this lens in the same way. 
Something else you'll need to consider is that Sony do limit some of the features that third-party lenses can use. For example, if you're using a Sony A1, you're going to be limited to 15 frames per second with a Sigma lens. I've not had any issues with that on the camera I'm using today, and I think that only does apply to the A1, but it's worth knowing about. And the Sigma is still going to be a great choice for most people. For my personal preferences, weight and ease of use is massively important to me. So to be totally honest, this isn't a lens I would personally buy. It's too heavy for me. I like to take photos on the go. I also wouldn't use the wide end as much. I do prefer longer lenses for this type of photography. However, it is a very good lens for the people whose photography it suits. It doesn't suit my personal style, but it's a great lens and the quality of the images surprised me and continues to do so. I didn't think these be as good as they are. Um, yeah, just it's really, really, it's, it's, it's really taken me back. If you want a really good quality and incredibly versatile super telephoto lens, then get yourself a monopod. This one has been an absolute lifesaver and we'll pop a link below for you to buy that. Add this lens to your kit. We'll buy exchange the two lenses it's replacing for you. Let us know if this is a lens for you or which of the lens you'd prefer in the comments. And if you've got any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and take a look at our other videos as well.